Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Health and Fasting. In this series, we're discussing a number of medical issues related to fasting. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about pregnancy and breastfeeding and how that may affect fasting. Okay, so pregnancy is not a disease, but it is not the normal condition of the individual. So pregnancy can be considered to be a physiological process in which the mother will be having a fetus inside her for a period of nine months. And after this nine months, the baby will be born and then there will be a new life that comes into existence. So Alhamdulillah, it's a, a beautiful process, a really joyful occasion and something that we all look forward to and all celebrate when it happens. But we need to be aware of the fact that the woman's body goes through a number of changes when she's pregnant. So as we said, it's not a disease, but it is also not the normal process, normal physiological state that a woman is generally in. So pregnancy, as I said, is a period of nine months. And in medical terms, we split this into three trimesters. So it's split into three equal periods each of about 13 weeks. So overall, a full-term pregnancy is considered to be 40 weeks. So each trimester is about an average of 13 weeks. And during this period, the mum and her fetus will go through a number of changes and there will be development and growth and different issues that the mum has to face during this pregnancy. So let's just examine the pregnancy in a bit more detail. So the first 13 weeks or the first trimester is the period from when the implantation began and the egg became fertilized to about 13 weeks of pregnancy. During this time, the mum will experience a number of symptoms and go through a number of changes in her body. So initially when the mum is pregnant, she may not be aware of that. And the first sign that she has that she may be pregnant is that an expected menstrual period will not occur and she will then have missed her menstrual period and she may then want to do a pregnancy test to see if she is pregnant. Now sometimes people are planning and trying for a pregnancy and they're aware of this and they'll be checking this on a regular basis. Sometimes it occurs when you're not planning for a pregnancy. But anyway, if a mum, if a lady misses her menstrual period and she's not sure if she's pregnant, you can get a pregnancy test from the chemist and you can do a urine pregnancy test and check if you are pregnant or not. So this will now be the time that she will have, having done the urine pregnancy test and found out it's positive, then embark on this beautiful journey of pregnancy. So during the first 13 weeks, as the baby grows, there are a number of issues that we need to be aware of. So normally most pregnancies are within the uterus, within the mum's womb, and they grow and develop from there. But in the first 13 weeks, there are a number of issues that may occur that the lady may need to be aware of. So she'll be followed up by her GP and her midwife and be seen on a regular basis to make sure everything is going okay. So as I said, in a normal pregnancy, the, the baby, the fetus is inside the womb and grows and develops from there. But sometimes on occasion, the pregnancy may be in the wrong place, what we call an ectopic pregnancy, which is a pregnancy outside of the womb which may be in the tubes, what we call the fallopian tubes, and this can be a medical emergency and something that needs to be dealt with. Symptoms that the mum may experience may be lower abdominal pain, pain on one side or another generally, and sometimes vaginal bleeding. And if this occurs, she'll be seen by the doctor and have a test, which may be a blood test, <clears throat> and then an ultrasound scan to see where the pregnancy is. And if it is in the tubes, then this will be dealt with in terms of managing her appropriately, which may be a surgical intervention to try and prevent the ectopic pregnancy from rupturing and causing further complications. Another issue that may occur in pregnancy, in early pregnancy, is what we call miscarriage. This is where, for some reason, unfortunately, the pregnancy is incompatible with continuing, incompatible with life, and the pregnancy, unfortunately, miscarries. This again may 
present as abdominal pain and bleeding. And again, the lady will be seen, maybe have a scan and see what's happening from there. So one of the problems that we need to be aware of in early pregnancy is abdominal pain and abnormal bleeding. Because in pregnancy, normally women don't bleed as their period stops. So any abnormal bleeding is something that needs to be highlighted and the lady needs to see her doctor to make sure nothing is going on. So abdominal pain and bleeding is a common symptom that we need to be aware of and if it occurs to seek medical attention. Also during the beginning of pregnancy, the mum will have a number of blood tests taken which will check for problems such as anemia, diabetes and all sorts of other things and these will be followed up closely and monitored. So there will be a long-term follow-up from, from the obstetrician, from the midwife and from the GP and they will make sure that everything in terms of the lady's health is covered. Then as the first trimester continues, then the pregnancy will develop and the lady will then have a number of investigations carried out. So at around 12 to 14 weeks, she will have a scan which will look at the baby, look at the heart of the baby, look at everything that's going on and make sure that's all okay. She'll also have a blood test which will be checking for some abnormalities such as Down syndrome and all of these will be covered and be explained to the lady and her follow-up closely arranged through the GP and the midwife. If all of these things are okay then the pregnancy will continue forward into the second trimester. During the second trimester this is when the abdomen, the lady's tummy starts to increase in size and she may develop some other symptoms related to this. Common symptoms that she may develop include things like back pain as the tummy gets bigger, so they put strain on the back. Also, as the tummy starts to push up on the abdomen and the diaphragm, she may start to develop what's called acid reflux and indigestion. And also, as it pushes up on the diaphragm, sometimes there may be some pushing on the lungs and she may have some issues related with that. So common things that the lady may experience in this period are back pain, acid reflux, indigestion, these sorts of things. Then as this progresses, she'll have further investigations and scans. So at about 20 weeks, they will then look at the baby in great detail, looking at the limbs, looking at all the organs and making sure everything is okay. And inshallah, if everything is fine, then the pregnancy will continue further on from there and will start to enter what is called the third trimester. So the last 13 weeks of pregnancy. When the lady enters the last trimester, this will be the last 13 weeks of the pregnancy and she will now really be showing her bump will be visible and everyone will be aware that this lady is pregnant. Things that we need to look out for or the healthcare team will be looking out for is checking her blood pressure regularly, checking the baby's movements, checking all of the other things that are associated with this and keeping her under close review in combination of the GP, the midwife and sometimes the obstetrician at the hospital. So things that the healthcare team need to be aware of are checking the lady's blood pressure regularly, also looking at the baby, making sure it's moving fine and then some other issues that we need to be aware of include things related to blood pressure that it may be something called pre-eclampsia. So this is a problem that occurs in the last half, last 13 weeks of pregnancy where there's high blood pressure, protein in the urine and swelling of the face. This is a medical emergency but it will be something that will be closely followed up and made sure that this is dealt with properly. So these are some of the common issues that women may face during pregnancy. If everything proceeds well, then at the term, which is about 38 weeks, 38 to 40 weeks, the pregnancy will be delivered. There are a number of ways the pregnancy can be delivered. Normally, we will aim for a vaginal delivery, which would be a spontaneous delivery, but sometimes due to reasons beyond our control, if the baby is facing the wrong way, what we call a breech pregnancy, it will have to be delivered by cesarean section, or if the baby is very large, or if there's some other issues, then the lady will have a cesarean section to deliver the baby. So why is this important for us to be aware of in Ramadan? <clears throat> As we've said, pregnancy is not a disease, it's not a condition, but it's not the normal state that the lady is in. So she's going through all of these changes, she has another life developing within her, and this causes strain on the body. 
So she may become excessively tired. As a result of carrying the baby, some women can become anemic because the blood volume becomes diluted. Also, she may have all these other problems that we've discussed. So being aware of these issues in terms of how your pregnancy may progress is important in terms of whether or not the lady can fast. And generally, my advice to patients is that if you are pregnant and you are going to be pregnant throughout Ramadan, then it is advisable that you don't fast. If you become pregnant towards the end of Ramadan and it's just a matter of a week or two, then it's probably okay. But generally speaking, if you're going to be pregnant throughout Ramadan, then it's better that you do not fast during this period because you are looking after yourself and carrying this new life within you. So your resources need to be maintained properly and fasting for long periods of time, 18 to 19 hours, is probably not going to be easy and certainly, in my opinion, not advisable for the lady to carry out. So what about if she has already had the baby and she is breastfeeding? Again, during this period, the mother's nutritional needs are being used in terms of her own nutrition, but also providing and producing milk for her baby. So I would advise, generally speaking, that if a lady is breastfeeding her infant, we would suggest that she does not fast and abstains from this. And then if she needs to, she can make up these fasts at a later point. So it is very important for us to be aware that during the period of uh, pregnancy and breastfeeding, there are two individuals that need to be considered, the mother and the infant, whether that's the infant as a fetus within the mother or the infant who is being breastfed by the mother. In both of these instances, the mum's normal nutritional needs become greater. So she has to consider that she's providing for herself and for the baby. So things that are important to be aware of are things like vitamin D, the risk of anemia. In early pregnancy, the mum will be advised to take something called folic acid, which is a supplement that is important to take. So if she's taking supplements, if she's taking nutritional supplies, then it will not be possible for her to fast during this period. So my advice would be that it is perfectly acceptable during the period of fast, uh, pregnancy and breastfeeding that the lady does not need to fast. If there is any query about this or if you're not sure, then please do refer to your scholar, to your alim, and make sure that there's nothing that you are not unsure about. But as I said, I would generally advise that ladies who are breastfeeding and pregnant do not need to fast. Just in closing, one other issue to mention, which is connected but not directly related to this, is that during the month of fasting, sexual intercourse is not permitted, at least during the hours of the fast. So if people are trying to conceive or people are hoping to try for a family, then they need to be aware of the fact that during the fasting period from dawn to dusk, the uh, intimate act of sexual intercourse is something that is not permitted. When the fast is broken, it is perfectly acceptable for the couple to have intimate relationships amongst themselves. I hope that you've discovered some useful tips during this episode, and I look forward to talking to you again and speaking more about health and fasting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.